Hello and welcome back to Colchester Academy's Science Revision Channel. Today we are talking all about fractional distillation. Now crude oil is a mixture and it's a mixture of a compound called hydrocarbons. Mixtures are where you have two or more different compounds that are not chemically joined together. Now because they are not chemically joined together, that means that we can easily separate them. And we'll talk about how we separate out crude oil and the mixtures in a second. Now, as we mentioned, crude oil is made up of these compounds called hydrocarbons. Now, hydrocarbons are very simple and straightforward compounds, and they contain just hydrogen and carbon atoms. Hydrocarbons are also known as alkanes. Now, an al alkanes are quite easy to spot. You can either look at the name and they will say A-N-E. Or you can look at the structure. Alkanes have a general formula of CnH 2N plus 2. So if you take ethane for example, it's got two carbons. It then has two times the number of hydrogens plus 2. Therefore, it has six. If you took butane, for example, butane has four carbons. Therefore, if you use the general formula of CnH2n plus 2, you would work out that butane has ten hydrogens. Each of these is linked by a single covalent bond. Now we would say that alkanes are saturated because each of their carbon atoms, just here, are joined to each other by single covalent bonds. Now let's think back to the beginning when we spoke about how crude oil is a mixture of different hydrocarbons. Now in order for us to separate out the hydrocarbons into useful fractions, for example, so that we can use them for fuel, we have to undergo a process called fractional distillation. Fractional distillation is a fairly straightforward process. Crude oil is pumped into a massive furnace just here, and it is heated until it becomes a vapour. Now because the crude oil is a mixture of hydrocarbons, each of the fractions will have a different point in which they evaporate. As the vapours enter the fractionating column, just here, they begin to rise. The further up the column they go, the cooler it is, and the vapours will start to condense Again, the point in which they condense will be different for each of the different fractions. Those fractions can then be tapped off just here at the side and they can be used for different things. Now if we had to sum up the process of fractional distillation into easy steps to remember, the first step would be to say 1. The crude oil is heated to a vapour. Then you could go on and say two. Each hydrocarbon evaporates at a different temperature, and this different temperature is depending on the chain length. You could then go on to say 3, the hydrocarbons will condense um, again at different temperatures.
Lastly, if we have a look at the fractions that you've just separated by the process of fractional distillation, you will find that fractions at the very, very top here um, are shorter um, and they are more volatile, so they are more likely to turn into a gas. Whereas fractions at the bottom, just here, they are longer chained, so there are more carbon and hydrogen atoms, um, and they are also more viscous, so they are more gloopy. Longer chained hydrocarbons are less useful to us, and in a later video we will look at how we can use the process of cracking to make longer ones more useful. That's our short summary of fractional distillation done. Thanks for watching.